Itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water stroke. Out came the rain and washed the spider out. Ever been in a situation like the spider? Did you give up? Did the spider? Toastmaster of the day and my fellow Galileans. It all started when I was in grade 10. The interviews to select probationary prefects came along and I was fully hyped. I knew that I was definitely gonna get selected. At this point, I was also a college scout, but I was willing to give up on that. I faced the interview, crushed all the panel's questions, but in the end, just didn't make the cut. It's fair to say that it took me a quite a long time to get over this. I watched as my friends became the student leaders, and I was left pondering, what am I going to do? Instead of sulking around, I decided that I'm going to pour all my strength and energy into something I love and something that accepted me. Fast forward three years, I'm in my senior year, leading the college scout group into a total whitewash at the annual district rally. And me, winning the award for the best senior scout. Looking back, I'm glad that I didn't become a repeat. Instead, I got the opportunity of a lifetime. When life pulls you back, remember that it's in order to project you into something greater. And when that happens, we have to make the best out of it, to fight for it, to work for it until our last breath. If I had become a prefect, I wouldn't have the great memories, knowledge, and the experience I got as a scout. And I definitely will not have the great friends I can still call my brothers. After finishing all my scouting and extracurricular related activities, I came at an impasse. Should I stop all my extracurriculars and focus on my studies? Or should I try to balance both of them? Now at this point, I was offered to renew my leadership of the scout group for the years of 2018 and 19, and I was also offered the choir leadership of our college choir. As hard as it was to say no, I said enough is enough and focused on my studies. Next thing you know, I passed my A-levels with flying colors and get selected into the best science faculty in the country. When we are met with sacrifice, we must remember to weigh all our options, to analyze the outcomes of our decisions, and to make sure that we understand the long-term effects of those decisions. Because I decided to focus more on my studies, I missed out on a lot of unique and fun stuff. But if I tried to balance both of them, I wouldn't be in front of you fine people. Remember, there is no success without sacrifice. How many of you remember your first crush? The first time that you got butterflies in your stomach? There was this one girl, short hair, fair as day. If I was going to describe her, I could go on for hours. I had this crush for four long years, but I could never bring myself to ask her out. Then, three months before my A-levels, I found out that she got gotten into a relationship with my best friend out of all people. I was heartbroken. Nevertheless, I moved on. Later, that same year, I met someone else, someone who inspires me, to brings, who brings out the best of myself, and someone who is a thousand times better than that girl in the tuition class. Sometimes life's not gonna go the way we want it to. We are not going to get selected to that course. We are not going to land our dream job. And we are definitely not going to get that girl. But we must be willing to cling on to hope. To hope that one day, not today, not tomorrow, not next month, not next year, but someday, life will get better. After all, isn't that what makes us human? The ability to cling on to hope. Thus. I ask you again, did the spider give up? 
Out came the sun and dried up all the rain, and its a bit spider climbed up the spout again. To summarize everything I've said, always make the best out of what you have before seeking new opportunities. Make the necessary sacrifices and always cling on to hope when times are tough. But there's something that trumps all of this that all of us must do. In life, there are two people that you must definitely impress. One is that eight-year-old boy or girl who has dreamt of everything that you've done and that you dream to do. The other is that eight-year-old man who must have no regrets regarding the roads taken or not taken. Be yourself. Drown out all the hate and carve your own road. With the mortal words of Frank Sinatra, I end my speech. I faced it all and I stood tall and I did it my way. Odio Toastmaster.